We'll do it live. Okay. <clears throat> we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Talking shit on a Tuesday when I'm not working, but uh, I'm working. Uh, I spend most of the day, most of the morning. Working on the Fox body, trying to get the carburetor to idle right. Took a little while, but I got some video on that, but it's not its not good. You know, I took a bunch of video on it, and it's probably worth 10 minutes of video, but it's not good because there's no ending. So I'm going to try to do some whole shots, 60 foot, something, just to give you guys some good content to finish the Fox body video. So, But today, what we're going to talk about is the religion of oil pump gears. The reason I say it's a religion is because it is such a standard belief without unequivocal proof. Now, people that are religious, I'm not saying this to slight your religion. I'm just saying there a religion is a belief system without 100% proof. Global warming, man-made global warming. Meanwhile, all of a sudden, the whole country is under 30 degrees. And they'll look at you in the face and stop calling it global warming. They'll start calling it climate change you know, to change the narrative. So in my opinion, Old Pump Gears took on that, took on that, that, that religion kind of moniker to me in 2011, 2012, 2013, because you did not see a bunch of Old Pump Gear failures. You didn't see a bunch. You saw a couple and people got scared and companies jumped on it and started making billet oil pump gears. And the margins on oil pump gears is ridiculous. I guarantee cost on oil pump gears is $175. And they're going for $400 plus. And then they changed the design to have some different qualities. But obviously, I'm not going to call out brands by name. But let's just say some of them will send you a cease and desist if you talk shit about their brand. But since I'm just an opinion guy, uh, we'll talk some shit on that. But before we do that, we're going to thank the sponsors. I want to thank the sponsors, as always, thank the sponsors, too. Make sure that we keep the um, disco ball on because we want to make sure that we have a party here every Tuesday. That's right. We got DNA High Performance. DNA High Performance makes sure that they sponsor the Tuesday Talking Shit uh, episode. It is the title sponsor for this episode. We also got PMAS. Nick James PMAS freezing his ass off. Rami's at on to Auto Solutions. He's waiting. I guarantee when we get back uh, Monday, it, Rami's going to have 16 cars for tuning. Part Farm to PartFarm.com. That's right. I am looking for Pedal Assembly. 11 to 14. Coyote Mustang 4. The GT500. Pedal Assembly. Stick. Thank you very much. The Part Farm.com with the badass logo. Don't we got cookies. We're giving away one set of cookies, three cookies, and one coffee today. To the, whoever the fuck I feel like it, and Calamer's Transmission, Ben Calamer, CalamerTransmission.com, Calamer Transmission up in Pennsylvania, taking care of everyone blowing up their MT-82s non-stop. Thank you very much. Wow, that's very good. I, I, Alex is on, wow, oh dude, guys, I'm having so much trouble moving these logos around. You have no idea. Like, I need one of those producers that just do shit, but then you're going to want to get paid, and then you're going to want, like, equity in the show, and I'm going to be like, fuck you. Then you're going to be like, well, Alex, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a show. Fuck you. That's why I do it all by myself. Let's say hi to the people and we get get after it. Let me uh, make sure I get the chat copy. Chat, paste, and then we can highlight your comment. And again, it's always subscribers only. Sorry, members only. So we don't have uh, True Viate and everyone else. So guys, wave hi. Make sure you wave hi to the people that are watching and cannot comment. Fresh Pasteles, Fresh Pasteles with Diego A, Darren Harper, Diego Flores, Gallo Bravo, Diego Flores again, JLPZ, Douche did it, Chris Jameson, Clip Clop the Horse, Matt, 2011 GT, what's up, brother? Chris Anderson, Harley, Taquache Mode, half bolted on. Large Macchiato, uh, we're here and ready. DNG Brandon, what's up, man? Large Macchiato again. EPA is watching. They're always watching. Valley 10 Speed, good morning, good morning. Matt, 2011 again. Harley, Steve Edwards, uh, uh, Jason, Gregory Utvich, Slow, Mendoza's Coyote, Victor Sopa Soda, Soda Pock, Soda, Soda Pock, Monty Rogers, Polly Pontheo, DNA Performance. Yes, sir, in the house. Steve Edwards, uh, Jason, Nat Jew, Evan Smith, Half Bolted on the Black GT500, Melissa, the pretty lady with the cookies. Did you guys smell the lunch in the cookies? No? She's got to start wearing some like crazy lotion in the cookies so people can taste her hands. Uh, with SVT, Frank Weaver, Noel, Tony Dominguez, Dr. YouTube, Valon Selimage in the house. We missed you, Valon Selimage. <laughs> Shut up. I'm from New Mexico. 
Dr. YouTube again, angry. Saturn Kaz have bolted on. Gallo Bravo Lee, Gregory Uffich, the Green RCSB, Thunder Biscuit, and Rich 50. So, who started the religion of oil pump gears? Did Ford recall your oil pump gears? Does Roush install aftermarket oil pump gears when they put a blower on your car? No. So, does do dealerships that offer Whipple packages upgrade the oil pump gears in the cars? No. So when and where did this all start? I'm not really sure, but I read, I started hearing some stuff around 11, 12, and 13. Gen 1, for whatever reason, a lot, some people that were very public on Facebook had some oil pump gear failures. Right around the same time, number 8 cylinder failures were happening. That's right, number eight cylinder failures were happening. And we talked about the head cooling mod that doesn't work to save your number eight cylinder. Maybe it works to equalize flow, but if you were to tell me, Alex, does this save the number eight piston from burning up? I would say absolutely not. But a lot of people started going out there saying, oh my God, you need to upgrade your oil pump gears. If not, they're gonna break. To the point that I actually heard Cletus say, Oh, this coyote motor and this this unit. If you call your car a unit, drink fucking bleach. Gargle that shit, unit. Shut up, dickhead. It's a car. Unit, stupid ass motherfuckers. So he's like, well, this thing has oil pump gears, so it should be good. Excuse me? Because it has oil pump gears, it should be good? So that is a religion. Something that it is spotted off as fact when it's not based on any fact if you actually looked back and saw the people that had oil pump gear failures they probably drove like this fucking clown let me uh, before before i show you the display I, I just want to make sure i don't have anything on the screen that's like that's like a problem so check this guy out on instagram under i.like.cars nyc he has a gen 2 coyote and proceeds to do a burnout in front of a bunch of kids. So he's totally an adult. This guy's totally an adult. Proceeds to do a burnout in front of some kids. And destroys his car. Now there's a lot of things that happen in this video that are very telling. Number one, lower the volume. It is loud. Okay? It is cringeworthy. It is, it is worthy of... Making it a sound clip, if I can actually grab the sound clip. Look, Gen 2 Coyote in front of some kids trying to show off his lack of having a dick. Okay, right now, it's really bad. Super bad. But look at the exhaust. Look at the exhaust. It turns black. And you can start hearing the car eat itself. It's over, right? You and I both know mechanical things sound mechanical. Pa, 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 pa. And then it went. <laughs> We're going to hear this a couple of times. So then if there's oil coming out of your motor, it is not your oil pump gears that failed. It is your rods that exited stage left, and now you go to you gotta go to bed, bad bed, bed bath and beyond and get some curtains for the fucking windows that were made. Oh shit. Now, a lot of stuff is telling on this video. Number one, look at the blower he has on it. Oh, Ooh, tough guy. Oh, everybody sh hey, back the fuck up. Everybody back the fuck up. Boom, has a GT500 swapped blower on a five liter. This is a regular Mustang. And it has a GT500 blower, a 2650, that with a massive pulley, you still make 10, 11, or 12 PSI. And he proceeded to slam it on the limiter and the smoke is coming out the side telling me a rod failed. Yep, right, thank you. Thank you, cameraman, for zooming in. Right there. Rod exited stage left, put some oil on the headers, and it's done. So let's watch it the whole thing. Let's watch the whole thing without me interrupting. Oh, 
gone. Comments. Bro, smacking the rev limiter like a virgin. Why do people lay on the limiter? Says Bondle Bird. Oh, driving that thing like a Honda. The only car that can handle that much red line is a Honda. L car owner. Okay, everybody, back up. Dude is mad. At least this Mustang owner killed his engine and not the crowd, too. Look, I'm a moron. Let me close my hood. I'm embarrassed. Sent her a little too fucking hard, bud. As soon as I heard the ver 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 ver, I knew it was gone. Dude was just laying on the rev limiter, bouncing it off red line. Okay, guys, can you stop saying red line? Red line starts at like 6,500. Stop saying red line. You guys in California, stop saying red line. It's the rev limiter. Um, off red line, under load while doing brake burnouts. Engine, of course, was going to be gone. You can do a burnout by holding the RPMs at 2, 25, 3,000, almost any modern VA. Oh, my God. This guy's a fucking, this guy, this fucking clown is like a, a, a expert at doing burnouts. L driver, L burnout. It's the reason RPMs has a red zone. Holy shit. Instagram is full of cuckery. So those are the people that had oil pump gear failures. Those are the people that had oil pump gear failures the fucking rods are weaker than the oil pump gears are weak so a lot of people out there made hundreds especially parts houses parts houses love to shove oil pump gears down your fucking throat and now right now john senior's getting some calls hey alex tell alex to shut the fuck up he's fucking up our bottom line because he's telling people to save money on oil pump gears hey go ahead buy oil pump gears if it makes you feel good the problem is this, I have seen in my ticket system so many times where a salesperson upsells a customer an oil pump gear set and they assure them that that will allow them to rev to 9,000 RPMs. Salespeople know fucking shit about Mustangs, okay? Shops know fucking shit about Mustangs. They know what the experts tell them about Mustangs. The only shop that I could say taught me some stuff about Mustang was Power by the Hour. Because Jake built, went through, swapped, swapped cams. Jake did some of the craziest cam swaps that we tried to make them work. And his theories on why everything worked out were on the money. And every single time I have a mechanical issue or some sorts like that, I would lean on Jake for his expertise. But these sales guys are out there telling you, you can buy this old pump gear set. You can rent to 9,000 RPMs. Just tell, you know what? If Lund doesn't want to send your rev limiter to 9,000 RPMs, I got a guy who's way better and he's actually a tuner, a real tuner, like legit tuner. He has a, I saw his certificate somewhere that said he's a real tuner and we're going to go ahead and send it to him because he's better. And then all of a sudden you have a window on your block and they're like, well, maybe you had a fat. Guys, the rods are weaker than the old pumps are weaker. Oil pump gears. So then you saw people selling oil pump gears, then indexed incorrectly crank sprockets. How many of you have heard of incorrectly indexed crank sprockets out there? Did you see that? And people were lining up the timing marks and they're like, well, I'm trusting that the timing marks are where they're supposed to be. And then they put it on and the cams are way the fuck off. And then they blame the tuner. And I'm like, sorry, dude, you got to take all your accessories off, your front cover off, and do it all over again. It is a religion, the oil pump religion. The oil pump gear religion is something that has been put out there as fact. And it is 100% bullshit. Now, people will say, well, Alex, what if you have an oil pump gear failure? It would be my first out of like 10 coyotes I've owned. My black car had stock oil pump gears. My white car failed with a ring land at 700 rear wheel horsepower than the oil pump gears did. Right now, my white car makes 795 horsepower stock OPG. So they owe me nothing even if they let go. So a lot of people out there thinking that at 10 PSI, you need oil pump gears. And the parts houses love it because their cost is $150 and they can charge you $400 for oil pump gears. Where did this start? Now, the problem is this. Once you start down that path of believing what everyone tells you or believe what Facebook tells you, believe what uh, Instagram tells you, believe anything that anyone tells you, then the next thing that person says, you take his law. Like the CJ is worth fuck all on a Gen 3. How many of you bought, how many of you saw the new designed CJ and thought, oh my God, here we come. Finally, a new revised CJ for the Gen 3. I can't wait to bolt it on my car. Everybody that knows anything said, 
that CJ is not going to make one more motherfucking horsepower. Not one motherfucker than the old CJ. But you guys said, Alex, why don't you just try it? Fuck face. I can look at it and know it's not going to make shit. Number one, it doesn't have a big fucking inlet. It has two fucking holes and the rib that goes down the motherfucker. And you got to port that to flow exactly what the old CJ flowed. Y'all didn't listen. You stupid ass motherfuckers bought it anyway. And then were Pikachu face when the fucking thin made one more horsepower over the old CJ. Wait a minute. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand. Why would Ford come out with a product that doesn't make any more power? Because you dumb motherfuckers are religious. It's real simple. You motherfuckers are religious. So if I was to take advantage of the religion that is coyote religion, I would, I would go out there selling you some of the dumbest shit. And say that it is awesome. And, and, and I'd sell it to you like if it was something amazing. Like the ability to take power out on a tune. Why the fuck would I want that? Get me a better tire. Get me better suspension. Why would I want to do that? I understand timing ramps. But god damn it. Why don't you just put a block of wood under your pedal and give it half throttle? Huh? Why don't I make a product that get, puts a block of wood under your pedal and when no matter how much you fucking floor that motherfucker... That son of a bitch is going to stay at half throttle all the way down the track. Because that's what you want, right? Yes. You guys want that stuff because you are religious. Common sense does not exist in the aftermarket. And this is what needs to start happening. The guys that know stuff need to stop talking. The guys that know stuff need to stop talking. Valley 10 speed. I guarantee, got so many DMs on people asking about his setup. And he, as a nice guy, probably said, oh shit, I can help somebody in my community. I had success. Lund helped me. Alex helped me. John helped me. Nardi helped me. Devin. I will share my knowledge that I got from them and from the testing that I did with them. And I guarantee he was met with skepticism. He was met with people lying to him. He was, people were asking down to the PSI of the fucking tires. So let's bring it back to the Fox body days, right? You all go to Lebanon Valley. You all go to English Town. You all go to Island Dragway. You all go to Maple Grove. And you run your setup and you never told anybody a goddamn thing about how to build theirs. And you saw who knew shit. You saw who knew shit. Right now, you got guys with skinny jeans going to tracks, running the same numbers that guys that know shit because they, they just spill out all the information. So let's bring it back to shutting the fuck up. Let's bring it back to the Fox Body days of shutting your whore mouth and letting them motherfuckers figure out on their own. Does this make more power? I don't know. Let me buy it, bolt it on, and see if it makes more power or it runs better. That's how it used to be in the Fox Body days. Nobody said, no, 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 you definitely don't want to get the GT40 head. You want to get the GT40Ps. Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever said, you got to get the trickle. They tried it. They put it on a car and they saw how their car ran. But now everyone wants to quick, easy, nine second setup. Hey, Alex, what gear ratio is in your Mustang? Fuck you. Hey, Alex, what, what RPM do you launch at? Suck my dick. Hey, Alex, um, what are your shift points on this guy's car? Eat my ass. That's where we're at. Unless you're my direct customer, you're not getting a goddamn thing. You're not getting any advice. You see how you guys hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, every you know, Grinder, all these apps, and you <laughs> and you were like, "Hey Alex, I need some help." Where's that fucking money? Oh, well, what the fuck? Oh, you want me to pay you? Yeah, because my years of knowledge is not going to be given out for free. And then you're going to want to ask me 15,000 other questions. And even if I give you the answer, you will still fight me because you heard something on a forum. You heard something from a salesperson. You heard something from a guy who has never done it that contradicts what I say. So now I just don't answer shit. I answer my email. I answer the ticket system. I answer my customers. 
I don't go out there and saying, you know what you guys should do to your car? No. Because I've told you that old pump gears aren't worth doing unless you're going to get after it and get out. Like if you have a turbo car and you bump in, I'm sorry. See, even that's fucked up because NA guys bump in now. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see this religious aspect of fuckery that's happening with coyotes? Where NA guys are bumping in? Listen to those words again. NA guys are bumping in. Okay. So if you need to set, get on a two-step and bump in, yeah, sure, you should get your old pump gears just for safety's sake. But if you're on 10 PSI and pump gas and you never get on the limiter, ask Roush. You never need old pump gears. Where did it start? What should we do about it? Should we shut the fuck up and let everyone figure it out on their own? What do y'all think about that? <clears throat> should I get OPGs looking for a few extra horsepower? I guarantee some idiot actually said, well, the way we design our OPGs allows for the oil to come off of the, the, the blade a little different, freeing up a couple of horsepower. Holy shit. Um, right, Alex? No one said a damn thing. Exactly. Back in the Fox Body days, you go to a track, you look at a guy's car, you go, what's done to it? And he goes, B-cam and four tens. That was the universal fuck off, son. What's done to the car? B cam and four tens. B cam filter and four tens. Meanwhile, the bitch smells like C16. Cam two. Remember Cam two? So every single time you'd be in Chicopee, you'd be at a uh, 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 Bernie Avenue, you'd be <laughs> you'd be at um, Berlin Turnpike, you'd be all these places. Motherfuckers would be like, "What's done to it? Rockers, pulleys, and four tens, and it'd be a nine second car." Should I do OPGs or 456s from that performance mod? Eliza says, I actually got help from Valley 10 speed. And no, I actually followed his advice and ran my number. And I try to support as much as I can. I'm going to start using that when someone asks me about my car. Eat my ass. What's done with it? Fuck you. What gears are in it? Eat dick. What pulley? Fuck your mother. I mean, no one is going to get anything that's happening with my... Like, the reason I have a channel... Is so I can at least maybe reference people to my channel in case they have questions about setups. Now, people think, oh, oh, he's cocky, he's an asshole, he's a shithead. No. Go to my channel and almost every answer to every question you've ever asked in history when it comes to Coyote and some small block Ford stuff is on my channel. But you're too lazy to look it up. Imagine, imagine in 1999, 1998, if you wanted to build a nine-second Fox body that you can open a catalog and the guy would give you the recipe? Wait, what? what? I want to go nines in a fox and there's the recipe? Holy shit. Well, that's what happened with Coyote, guys. Everyone wanted to share their recipe. Everybody wanted to share their recipe. And then a guy like me comes along and goes, that's fucking stupid. And you go, <laughs> who are you? Who are you, Alex? This guy told me to set the suspension so that the rear end gets stuffed into the quarter panel and that's the best way at 60 foot. Meanwhile, Lund Racing's cutting 1-1 one, one somethings with his S550. With Lund's settings. But no. Religion, religion, religion. Alex Grinder was supposed to be a secret between me and you. The, the only social media Alex talks to is on Grinder. <laughs> My Wibble car was bone stock. The guys that would say those AFR 185s heads are too big for an NA small block Ford. Oh, my Lord. What the hell is bumping in NA? Look, people don't even know what bumping in. And there are NA guys that bump in. And I am so embarrassed to own an S550 knowing that that guy owns a similar platform car that I do. And they bump in naturally aspirated. What are you spooling up? What exactly are you spooling up? Well, no, you don't get it. It's so that we're ready. Boy, shut up. Yeah, I agree. The carburetor needs to be stolen for Alex to figure it out. If you get vibranium OPGs, you can rev to the moon. 20 minutes of religious preaching, man. Alex going in on them clowns. Bump and back it up. Oh, dude, stop it. I install Wibbles and Roush blowers at the dealer. Ask me how, any, how many OPGs I've done. Zero. Eric Vega installs Whipples and Roushes at a dealer. I guarantee he has put no OPGs on them, bitch. <clears throat> You're telling me as long as I don't do first gear limiter burnouts, my motor will survive? I think if you never hit a limiter, your motor will survive. Now, if you have a turbo car and you are up on the chip and you're bumping in, 
absolutely get yourself a set of oil pump gears. But if you have a Whipple car with 15 or more PSI and you have a second gear lead tune, you never, ever need to get oil pump gears. Everyone loves Tony. Tony just makes an appearance with his psycho eyes. If you're not building a race motor, I don't get OPGs and know where to buy them. If you know, you know exactly. I'm not going to talk, start talking name brands here, but you and I both know the most widely known name brand relies on the sales of these parts houses to, to make its money. When I'm saying, you don't even need them. Now, when you're going to build a race motor, sure, absolutely get them. But, that, but I recommend Lever Noise, TSS, and I think Ford Racing has crank sprockets for like no money. It's crazy. Like, okay, the old pump gears that are in Predators, hey yo, um, the 5.2s, if Ford sold those, because I think they're a little beefed up. I think the Predator uh, 5.2 GT500 old pump gears are a little beefed up. Because the thing's making 12 PSI right off the rip, right? Like 11 or 12 PSI right off the rip. And it revs to 7,800 RPMs. So they go, you know what? It's already a 5.2. It's already a beefy fucking motor. Might as well get a good crank sprocket and a good old pump gear in there. Because they're going to pull you down. Very smart. And and the GT500 launches off a two-step because it's DCT. The GT500 has all pump gears because it goes bop, 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 bop. It bounces off the rev limiter to launch. It has a soft limiter. It bumps in, and then after, if you pull it down or get a tune on it, you're going to use the same exact limiter to launch in. So Ford said, well, they're going to bounce it off the limiter, so might as well get a good set of old pump gears in there. But if you're not doing that, if you have a 6R80, a 10R80 car, a 10 PSI, you don't need shit. Alex, you haven't answered me how the new Turvy tune will work for my 350, though. What are you, is he trying to be fun? Alex, the Martha Stewart of tuning industry. Hello, hello. Just here to drop a like. SVO sticker is worth five horsepower. Do I need OPGs with the Platzi did not? Stang mode bumped in when he was N8. Look, I don't care about Stang mode. Stang mode's out there doing commercials sounding like a an effeminate guy. And I, you couldn't pay me enough to do a commercial for a dude for a company to sound like an effeminate guy talking about a man pedal. And I don't think any of his vehicles have a man pedal. <clears throat> Carter Live, what's up, TD Carter? Spool in the bus seat, Ignacio Ramirez. I made it. I've been a rough with my wife in ER. Oh, shit. Way to, way to bring us down. Jesus Christ. I've been taking care of the kids. Hopefully, she'll be home tomorrow. What did I miss? Valley 10 speed. I literally have a guy that wrapped his car black just to make sure everything is exactly the same as mine. And now he goes around saying he will gap me even though he has zero races. I'm done. Sold my Coyote last night, says EPA. The peasants have ruined it for me, and I agree. I would probably sell my white car, but I really like the car. Um, it's one of the few decently quick street-oriented S550s, especially Gen 3. Not a lot of S550s Gen 3 are getting after it. I don't want to make that car a track car because shit's going to break. Shit's just going to break. It's a heavy car, stock axle, stock drive shaft. If I start buying drive shafts, axles, and fuel systems, might as well just fucking get bigs and littles and a, and, a, and a full steed of suspension and race it. I don't want that. I don't want that for that car. I want to just make a little power, be street friendly, leave it alone, and enjoy it for a very long time. I've told you guys not to take it too far. But Valley 10 Speed has had the exact same issue people in the Fox body generation that started sharing their info had. I'll tell you a story. There was this fucking homo named Peter Craig in Southampton, right? He a tough, tall fucking piece of shit. But he had decently quick cars. He would take a car that was totaled. He'd jack it up. He had connections with insurance. And then he'd basically piece it together like a Frankenstein and sell it for a profit. And that's fine. So he had a white car that, you know, was built with these heads, this and this and that. So there was this guy in Southampton named um, Tim. And Tim copied, because he hung out with Peter all the time. He copied him. He copied his setup. He copied his wheels. He copied his gears. He copied his heads, his cam. He copied everything that Pete did. Then he started talking shit that he should be faster. I said, wait a minute. If you copied me and I have more time with my setup, what makes you think you're going to be faster than me if you haven't even tuned it right, raced it or whatever? The car had never been down the track at all. And he was talking shit like he's going to fucking mop Pete up. Then they raced one time 
and Pete beat him by about a bazillion cars. Then he raced a Camaro, and the Camaro beat him by a bazillion. He was confused. Wait a minute. I bolted on the exact same parts he has. Why am I not going faster? Simple. Dialing in. You got to dial in the combo. Whether it's, whether it's springs, whether it's tire pressure, whether it's how you shift it, how you drive it. You can't just expect to bolt stuff on a car, go to the track, and run the exact same number a shop that has been doing it for five years does. A lot of people do that. And what happens when a customer listens to us 100%, runs a number, all of a sudden he's an authority, an authority on this stuff. I go, excuse me, you're fast because we told you what to do and how to go fast. And you listen. But what happens is the guy gets cocky, starts having fights with his friends, his crew. It happened in the Fox Body days. It happened in, in the Evo world. It happens in the Honda Civic game. It happens in every single game. Fox Body, import, and modern Mustang game. A guy listens to, let's say he has a shop. They build him a fast car. He goes fast. All of a sudden, he turns the fucking switch and says, oh, I'm the man now. You got to listen to me because I'm running the fucking number. Meanwhile, the shop has been running that number for about five years. It's a crazy world we live in. This crazy uh, time where people are out there trying to, I don't know, be some kind of authority. Bro, you haven't done shit. you Johnny come lately. You're just another motherfucker. Um, any guys who bump in are the same guys who call them Yodis. Their OPGs tune just need a patch. Bumping NA, spooling up their tornado intake. But Alex, I'm bumping up my vacuum. Xander and those OPGs. NA cars doing John Force burnouts. Yeah, that's the other thing. I'm blown away that NA cars sit there and do really long burnouts when all they really have to do is a cleanup and they don't make enough power to spin if your suspension's proper. Like if you see a little bit of smoke coming out your shit, you're done. I'm going to see if I have a video of the red car doing a burnout. And I'm telling you, I, I did just such basic burnouts because I'm like, why do I need to do a ridiculous, long, stupid burnout? Do I have playlists? Let me go on. Yeah, I, I really need to get on the playlist. Uh, I have time, but honestly, the last thing I want to do on my time off is work more, but I, I eventually have to do some work. Let me see. Red car. Red car. Let's see if we see a playlist. Uh, da, 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 da. What's the most important thing? Stock better than 350. Flex. Da, 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 630 ultimate headers. Draggy, traction compound. Yeah, even on traction compound on the street, I did a big dumb burnout. Let me see, where is that? Here we go. Here we go. I, I'm such a dumbass. I actually went out there, like literally asking cops to pull my ass over and do big stupid burnouts in the middle of the street with this guy. <laughs> Boy, I was a stupid motherfucker, huh? Yeah, out there in the middle of Mexico. <laughs> I'm like, yep, just going to put down some of this pimp juice that didn't do a fuck all because it's an asphalt road that has no rubber down but i think i did a big dumb soupy burnout with this thing by the way drag radials are shit drag radials are absolute trash on an unprep road with a uh any kind of compound is there a car coming there's a car coming <laughs> What a dumbass, like dumbass uh, month. But I'm trying to see a track one where I go to the track. I take advantage of good air. Red car runs his best motor. Yeah, all motor. Da 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 da. But it's just out of track though. Try launch it. No, this is draggy where I probably got pulled the fuck over. No, I don't have anything. Da da da. Red car got pulled over. What is the most important sensor? The map sensor. I already know that. Coyote and take manifold shootout. You guys still haven't seen that video anyway. What I'm saying is, any guys love to do big, dumb burnouts because they can, and it, it's counterproductive. Eric Vega says, <clears throat> I've only considered OPGs because I'm in a two-step, and at this point, I'll just get a new pump assembly. Why? Because it works, exactly. Um, I have TSS in my car, ODBs. Good evening, good evening, says JD Swag. Yes, the Predator gears are thicker, says Quentin Bailey. Any guys that bump in also carry water to the T. Can I return my old pump gears? <laughs> any noob? Am I noob? What's an OPG? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. See what I mean? This guy builds top fuel motors. <laughs> are residents, are the resident LS guy, we don't need OPGs, just a Melling 295. Remember that? Didn't, didn't a guy who went over to that Coyote world 
put OPGs in it. And Rami was like, I have never put oil pump gears in an LS or LT. You don't need OPGs if you use Stagmold's hair grease on install. Yeah, that, that's the other troubling thing about that commercial. His hair looks fucking dirty and greasy. Like, bro, tighten that shit up. If you're going to be on TV with a lisp talking like a fucking gay guy, cool. That's your MO. Look better. You just, and, and love you, you got to tighten it up. You, you big. You got to tighten that shit up. If you're going to be on camera a lot, you got to tighten shit up. Look better, do better. Your channel will grow. Trust me. If you're a good looking guy and you look good and you, you, you show health, people are more likely to watch you. If not, you're just another fucking fat load in a car. Um, you don't dope up gears if you... <laughs> Valon Selama says, you can't forget your high flow oil filter with the new oil pump gears. Admiral Pack, oh my God. I've been seeing a lot of build and boosted three valve. Goodbye. He said three valve. There's some Kobe and Jordan vibes. Like Alex, like Alex has money is like, like Alex has money is everything. I wouldn't mind paying someone for their knowledge. Just like we do with doctors. Got it. Average life expectancy of doctors in the 50s. I don't trust doctors. Alex, I noticed that with most of your cars, besides the wheels, cosmetically are stock. Just curious if you could get one mod for free. What would you choose? And I do Anderson Composite Duck Build Trunk. Never. My cars are stock wheel. Uh, I don't I don't like aesthetics on cars, meaning I like the look of a GT. So I bought a GT. I like the look of a notch. So I bought a notch. My cars, my GT500 looks like a regular ass GT500. The people that go out of their way to get duck bill this, Celine wings on cars that aren't Celines, I, I'm not a fan of that. I just don't do that. I like the car to be stock looking and fast. That's it. Second ship says, 700 horsepower car dialed in is more deadly than 1200 horse par hit or miss car. Yeah, but there are some, like my, my white, my blue car. When Brian, when the previous owner, Brian, owned that car and it was at its tip top shape and it was grudge racing here at palm beach that car was deadly consistent that car would go a to b in sand a to b eight one eight oh mid four no, high four second high four second eighth mile car but that it had no cage it had nothing it, it literally had nothing it was dangerous as hell he would do it in sneakers and a fucking jumpsuit and i'm like nah i'm good um, got to dial in those oil pump gears. Be careful, guys. Whatever happened to just having fun, fast street car? Um, we're getting back to that. You're starting to see a lot of people. Okay, everybody wants, everyone, everyone wants to pressure me to make the white car an all-out race car. And I'm like, well, that defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do with that car specifically. That car specifically shows what a street car can be. So if I put a fuel system in it, an E85 and pull it to the moon, that's unattainable for 80% of the people in this audience, right? 80% of the people in this audience make less than $60,000 a year. They can afford a power adder, maybe, and pump gas. So if I go, hey, look at this street car that has a fuel system, ID, ID hoses, and um, it makes 2,000 horsepower, you're going to go, okay, cool, but it's unrelatable. The white car is the most relatable vehicle I have on the channel. By far. Now, I haven't heard anything from ESS on the truck. So I'm going to give them another month. And again, I'm not pressuring them. But I'm saying that truck's got to go. Because it's just costing me money, not providing any content for me. If I'm going to have a tow vehicle, why not have a comfortable tow vehicle? And that truck is not a comfortable tow truck. So I put a new muffler in it, a new starter in it, a new battery in it. All it needs is a detail and, an, and like interior, exterior, really clean it up nice. And then... Get it out of my life because I haven't heard a goddamn thing from anybody. It has a fuel system here. It's got injectors ready to go. Nothing. So it is an unrelatable vehicle and un it's an unnecessary bill I have on my channel. But the white car is the most relatable car I have. And if I make that thing a nine second stick car, you're going to go, well, I can't relate to Alex. I can't relate to Alex. Like you guys want me to go all the way with that car to blow it up? To I already blew up a motor, but the last thing I want to do is blow up another one. No, thank you. I already blew up a transmission, motor. We blew up a whole bunch of stuff. There was a guy that made like 1,400 horsepower in my city. He got beat by 700 horsepower cars. Homie didn't know squat about tires and suspension. I went to Maryland Dragship and I saw a Mustang do a burnout with stock tires. It was so disappointing. Have you ever seen the ridiculous long burnouts at Yellow Belly? Nope. Uh, never been, never will go. Long burnouts, guys watch too much YouTubers so they think they're cool. 
Mango Brian says, need OPGs, need at 650 for the key fob feature flexing for Instagram. Eric Vegas says, it's crazy how many people will steal knowledge and act like it was them, honestly. Even I took advice from Tim Anders, played it with, played with it and worked, gave him credit where it's due. Just, I'm just another guy. I don't know who Tim Anders is. Should I know who that is? Talk about pimp juice, my pimp juice. Pulled over, the pulled over video, exactly. Um, the S750 will have featured next where you have a button on the remote and it will perform a burnout. <laughs> Upgraded OPGs didn't save the rods in my Gen 1. Pegalos. Right. The thing that's going to go first on your Gen 1 car is your rods. All pump gears are the dumbest fucking thing to get on a, on a Gen 1 car. One, if you make north of 700 horsepower, your rods are the weak link. So all pump gears are the least of your concerns. Um, Look more better. I still think Mustang Lifestyle has the worst hygiene. Dude doesn't know what a nail clipper is. <laughs> so there you know <laughs> i'm a teeth guy right like if i'm talking to you and you have visible plaque on your teeth i not only can i not take you seriously i don't want to talk to you because you gross me the fuck out and there are, the mustang community specifically has had some of the worst teeth I've ever seen. If you go to any Mustang race and you see the 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 fucking chiclet on these motherfuckers, you go, do you not have a mirror in your house and you don't go like this and see that your teeth are fucking jacked up and you got plaque all and your gums are all swollen? I'm saying swollen gums, plaque in their teeth, shit in their teeth. I'm like, wait, you're you're the face of a company. You're the face of a channel. You should do the best possible to represent yourself decently. I lost some weight because I started looking at myself and I'm like, I'm a little pudgy. I'm a little pudgy. Compared to the Mustang guys, I'm fucking straight jack compared to some of these Mustang guys. But for me, I was like, I just want to be looking a little better, a little tighter, tighten it up. And I did. That's it. Plain and simple. These motherfuckers don't even brush their fucking teeth. I am blown away by the plaque in the Mustang community. OPGs didn't save that guy ZL1. Same. Oh my god. I just had more pack. Uh, my crank took a dump on a Whipple setup. OPGs are still good. Right. Oh, Whipple 5.0. Let me ask you a question about the crank sprocket. Is the crank sprocket, if you put it up against the shoulder of the crank, does it seat properly or is there a gap? Motor builders out there. Take your crank sprocket, put it up against the shoulder of the crank, whichever brand, put it up against the shoulder of the crank, tighten the bitch down and see if you have clearance. Take some feeler gauges and see how much clearance there is back there. Shouldn't be any. Should be flat up against that shoulder. But guess what? A lot of the oil pump gears that came out, I want to say three to four years ago, you could fucking slide a 10 or 15,000 shim in that motherfucker. And you're like, wait a minute. It wasn't made so that it bottoms on the shoulder of the crank. Interesting. Uh, Matt Angerman. Uh, yeah, I've, of course. I found a stick trans. I, I'm not going to talk about it until I'm ready to talk about it. I have rod knocking. Uh, what does it say? Bet. Oh, pump gears will fix it. Other than headlights, because 90s Ford headlights suck. What's he talking about? What, what the fuck is Admiral Peck talking about? What the fuck? Is he having his own conversation? Holy shit. Um, I spent their, um, they spent their money on a huge ring for their Mustang. Skull, brother. OPGs didn't save Turvy from falling and hitting his head when he was little. <laughs> Those teeth are what happens when you eat too much man ass. They don't even know what plaque is. I just want my car to hit the mid-7, 60 to 130. Fast enough to make a Huracan owner laugh on a roll. Are Huracans that slow? My Corvette ran 6.8. My ZR1 ran 6, 8 something. 6K3. I need a new spark plug. I'm going to change the spark plug tomorrow to another 60 to 130. Are you, are you telling me Huracans are slower than that? He keeps it on his teeth to snack on later. What's up? Um, Martin says, Tony, big chilling. Tony is, he's just chilling. He's just, oh, Jesus, what the hell is wrong with you? You ate, you already ate, you already went out. I don't know what you want. You already ate and went out, dude. Like we're done. Get out of here. 
Uh, <laughs> Jason Gross. Dude's got summer teeth. Some are going this way. Some are going that way. At what point will the ZR1 gap the white car? Well, so the ZR1 is on Sunoco 260 GT. So is the white car. The white car in 50 degree weather probably is a 660 car. The problem is this. Grip. When it's cold outside, the grip might become an issue because it has the NT555R2s. But now it's back to 75, 80 degrees here. We're back to normal here. And I think the car can get a 6.7 or a 6.6. The Corvette is right there. Both have the same fuel. The Mustang has two or three more PSI. It is heavier. It is 3,800 pounds. The Corvette has just a pulley, a tune, and good fuel. And it is right there with a 110 millimeter pulley or 115, 115 millimeter pulley on the white car, which is like 12 PSI. Actually, they're both making the same amount of boost, I think. And I think the Corvette is right there with it. Um, okay, okay, okay. I spent my um, two to five millimeters, uh, millimeters of slack. I spent my money on my car and not my teeth. YouTube been giving you guys dental. A lot of crank snaps caused by improper seated balancers. I agree. I also agree that a lot of the installs that are happening, and then people start blaming the balancers. Oh, it's an ATI balancer? It must be an ATI issue. Not necessarily. If you're doing engine building, it's not just slap it on and go. Sometimes you have to touch some parts up. Yeah, they're like 8.3, 60 to 130. That's it? Oh my God, my white car will destroy that. So will the Corvette. Uh, Admirable Peck is talking in his sleep. He ain't chilling no more. Uh, he's like, here I am, dog. I do actually talk in my sleep. Who cares, bro? Look, who, stop. My dog won't stop barking at the TV now. Tony looks like he wants some OPGs on the quicks. Tony's eyes are OPGs. Teeth is the one thing I am religious about. Yeah, you do have good choppers. By the way, second shift racing, do me a favor. When you interview that dude with the Cobra, the red Cobra, can you put a little cocaine under his lip or something? He is the most dull, non-personality having dude I've ever seen. I'm like, he's like, hey man, your car just went 880s. What do you think about that? I'm happy. Well, you got, you, you, what are you going to do now? I'm, I'm just going to detail it and put it in my garage. Oh man, what a great run. Are you happy? I'm happy. Bro, put a little cocaine, give him a bang energy drink, something. That dude is like the biggest downer. Love him. He's probably a great guy and a hard worker, but God damn it, that guy needs to develop a little bit of a personality if he's going to be on camera a lot. He deleted what? You saw it, Jason? Damn, he deleted it. How do you forget the ZR1 has a blower? That's what makes it a ZR1. Yes, he said, I forgot the ZR1 was blown. What? A, I mean, come on, stop it. Stop it. Um, my Gen 3 Vortec 3.3 pulley has gone a best of 6.1 in great conditions. Alex's car should be right there. Yeah, the thing is, I'm not willing to put a drag pack on it. I got those VMSs, but I don't want to put drag pack on that car. I want to keep the 20s. I, look, the moment I start going down that rabbit hole, there's no coming back. There is no coming back. If, if I put S77Bs, 18-inch fronts, because it's got Brembo's, 315 tire, I'm like, this bitch ain't coming back because I'm going to put 20s on it and go, man, I miss the grip of the fucking 315s. I miss the, the feel of just having grip whenever you want it. And it's just a rabbit hole. I'd rather just get in my ZR1 or get in my uh, notch and just have fun with that. <clears throat> Excuse my ignorance. Will swapping the headers on your vet be difficult as doing it on the white car GT500? According to everything I've been told, no. There is a ton of room underneath the car. And when I got underneath the car to do the, the cap back, I'm sorry, the axle back, I guess it's axle back, it looked really simple. It looks like you just undo the manifolds, undo the oil lines. I got to do the oil change tomorrow, so I might have to do it twice. But I don't know when I'm getting the long tubes. I asked Rami to get them for me, but he's waiting to hear back from American Racing. It's going to be a set of two-inch primary American Racing long tube headers from um, American Racing, from Rami Zaidan to Auto Solutions. And he's like, no, it's not that bad of a job. You just, if I were you, I would just disconnect the oil lines and do your oil change at the same time. But the car's due for an oil change, like it's overdue for an oil change. And I really don't want to keep beating on the car unless it's got fresh oil in it. 
Do you have any plans on upgrade the blower to a ZR1? Maybe go crazy. Oh, oh, oh. Is, is this motherfucker? Is this motherfucker on crack? Like, does this guy not understand anything about ZR1s? I've been talking about ZR1s not stop. I've been talking about what's possible. What's does he not know anything? Holy shit. Holy shit. There's no room. Uh, probably centrifugal. Yeah, I'm going to put a centrifugal in my ZR1. That's what I'm going to do. That's right. I'm going to put a centrifugal in my ZR1. Pro Charger. I'm glad you're back working on your own cards. I started tuning in more personally. I'm assuming your views have gone up too. They've gone up, but the retention is the best thing. The 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 views have not gone up a lot because... I mean, let's be honest, this channel is never going to be that channel. This channel is not a channel you can hand the phone off to your kid and have him watch beginning to end because he's going to learn more swear words than anything about cars. So YouTube de-amplifies. Uh, That's the word we use, de-amplify. They have um, bots and algorithms that amplify a channel or de-amplify a channel. So what happens is if you have a kid-friendly channel, where you can speak to most people, especially children, they amplify. They spread the word out more because they say, this is advertiser friendly. My channel is not that. My channel is not advertiser friendly. I talk to you like a real person. If I think I need to say fuck before and after a word for emphasis, I will say it. I will not say frig. Imagine the smell of women who fool with guys that have plaque in their teeth. Eesh, Jesus. The only ZR1 that wasn't blown was a C4 ZR1 with its 32 valve yam. Oh my God, here we go. Everyone with their fucking, with their whole shit. My C5 vet was super easy to do headers on. Add peck, the streets wait, take a rest. Exactly. I did headers on a C6. They literally fell in place. They look really easy. There's a flange. There's a manifold. And the flange, I think it has six bolts or four bolts on the flange. You undo the flanges. It drops the mid pipe with the cats on it. Boop. That all drops. Undo the O2s. Then you undo the manifolds. Then you go from the bottom up with the headers. The answer is probably yes, but has anyone tried doing a CJ Pax in the 85 on a 350? Benefits of going CJ on the application are just better for any. Why would you want to do CJ when you can make 1,000 on the stock GT350 intake? What is people's fascination with a GT350 and a Cobra Jet intake when on the GT350 intake manifold and you boost it properly, you can make more money than the, you can make more power than the rods can handle. Why the fascination with Cobra Jet? Tell me why do you think you would benefit from a Cobra Jet setup over a stock setup when boosted? Like what is, what do you want, the power curve? Just put more boost to it. It's a centrifugal. Rev it higher. I don't understand the fascination with CJ boosted setups. I don't. Peck has been inhaling too much nitro. My C601 has a 2300 blower from the factory. Exactly. Sentry on a ZR1. Exactly. Time out for Turby's brother. Dude, unreal. Ad Peck wants you to have a crank mounted Sentry. Um, any ZR1 without a PD blower feels wrong. I haven't made it to either stream or holders in a week. I got to. Oh my God, stop it. Javier Martinez says, I'm a Chevy guy and have a 19 ZL1. You have the best consistent content. Love the ZR1. Just wanted to show my support. Javier, thank you so much. Look, I understand this channel is never going to be huge. But one thing about me that you can count on is I am going to be genuine with the channel. <clears throat> Meaning, generally what I say and how I act is how I am in everyday life. There are many channels and many people that are 100% acting in front of that and trying to make their brand fit a certain demographic. And I'm like, that that's a lot of work. I'm going to be me and I'm going to be I'm going to talk to you like a normal person. And very few of you actually get what I'm trying to do. Very few of you understand my humor, but the ones that do I really appreciate because what I'm doing with the ZR1 is is, is a slow build. What I'm doing with the white car is a street street. I am not going to go nines in it. If it goes nines, it's, it's, it's out of a mistake. I'm not going to put axles and a drive shaft in it to make it a race car. If you guys want that, go to another channel. This car is going to stay street. I want to be able to drive from here to California and back without changing much. The ZR1 
is going to be a deep 9 second drag car and 4 second 60 to 130 car because it is king daddy stick shift status. That's the way I consider that car. GT500 is going to be a really fast street car and track oriented vehicle that has a stick shift in it the notch is going to be a fucking notch it's going to be small block forward content so i'm trying to give you guys as much as possible but again i'm one person so i appreciate the people that stick it through i did some video today on the notch and it just didn't come out the way i thought i wanted it to come out like it looks rather boring me putting a carburetor on and putting a set of spacers on the wheels because i basically turvied the wheels because i they're hitting the um coilover but then i'm like okay Tomorrow, we'll get after it, maybe do some launches, do some 60 foots with it on the draggy, just for content's sake, and maybe get some video from the outside of me doing that, and maybe that'll make a better video. And then, I'll come back with white car content, Z01 content, therefore, therefore, and all the other stuff. Um, damn, Harvey, you're coming in strong, very strong, appreciate that. What is he doing? Uh, yeah, he's just being an asshole. Can you revoke membership, Alex? Uh... Uh, not pointing any fingers. The C6 work had headers drop in from the top. Holy shit. The Z01 headers in three hours tops. I can do C6 headers in less than two hours because it has the word jet in it. I guess so. I guess so. Thank you for timing out, Admiral Peck. Admiral Peck, look, you're not funny. We see you as a turvy. I appreciate you being a member, but you're, you're saying really dumb shit and you're showing that you don't know a goddamn thing. If you want to be taken seriously, Admiral Peck, Shut up and listen and have content or at least comments that add to the chat. But you're trying to be the central figure of the chat. And there's only one central figure of this chat and it's me. Plain and simple. People, people get to say I have a CJ too. Alex, me and you have a connection. I understand you, says Half Bolton on. Streeta, says Nat Jew. <clears throat> Why would you ever want to drive to California? <laughs> look, there's some really, look, I met a nice, there's some nice looking girls in California, especially Northern Cali. Do you know what I'm saying? How many spacers though? It's equals a half inch. It's two quarter inch spacers. Because what happens, I had a quarter inch spacer and the 15 by 10s rub on the coilover. Exactly what happened with the Fairmont. So what I have to do is remove the coilover, put a normal shock there and, and either relocate the coilover to where the coil was or get a regular spring in there and I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to get like a set of four drag springs and put them in the stock perch location. Wait, he got banned or timed out? He got timed out. Um, Admiral Peck is Turvey's dad. Were you able to locate the period correct hood for the notch? Will that be revealed during the video on that car? So the notch, I was able to go get an HO Fiber Trends hood. The HO Fiber Trends hood is a four inch cowl hood. He informed me that he had the same exact hood for Fairmonts. So I said, get me a four inch cowl hood for the Fairmont. So I have a four inch cowl hood coming for the Fairmont and a four inch cowl hood coming for the white uh, notch. Boo this man. I think Turvy Peck and Iraq are half bros. I heard that brother. Turvy is disappointed. Alex is building the white car street, not streeter. See, I had a guy on the comments say, you owe it to us to give us data on the ESS with the 85. And I go, no, I don't. I don't owe you a goddamn thing. No offense. The car has a completely stock fuel system except for a booster pump. Stock rails even. And I was able to get really close to 800 horsepower. That proves my point. The last thing I need to do is blow it up to show you something. That doesn't get me anything. And the last thing I want to do is blow up my car for 5,000 views. I'm not stupid. Okay, that car is going to get back down, put a 120 millimeter pulley on it, back the timing down to 14 degrees, pump gas, and I'm good. If a fuel system falls from the sky, that's a completely different story. But I'm not going to go out of my way, buy a fuel system for the car when I have three other cars that can make 800 plus horsepower with minimal effort. The notch can be a nine second car with a $1,000 nitrous kit. Think about that. You want me to spend $2,000 on a fuel system to put it on a street car to run 60 to 130 times as opposed to a $1,000 nitrous kit on a notch and potentially run nines in it stick. 
It's a very easy math equation, in my opinion. <clears throat> the notch is going to look sick with the new hood. I hope so. How much power can the ZR1 trans hold? 1100. It's a TR6060. 11, 1200. The synchros are going to be the issue, right? So Ben Calamar, I talked to Ben Calamar. I said, do you fuck with ZR1s? He goes, yep. I've done plenty of ZR1 transmissions. I go, what's going to be the issue? He goes, well, the synchros and the gear set, but the car is light. So I've seen many eight second stock transmissioned ZR1s, but the synchros tend to be an issue. Greg Kong went eight with a stock TR6060. He had a good clutch, good wheels and tires, but he eventually started having synchronizer issues. But the gear set is pretty stout. So according to Ben Calamar, he goes, yo, Ben, the, the trans is good. It's just a matter of the synchros. Where is Ensign Turvey? I bet that guy wasn't even a member. Imagine non-members making demands on what vids you make. Right. It, it was weird. It was like, you owe it to us. And I'm like, I don't owe you shit. See, there's a lot of guys out there that get caught up on records. Like, I think 9.4 is the Gen 3 stick record. The D4 MT82. I don't care. 9.4 or 9.3. I'm like, I don't care. If I go out there and it runs a 10.0, fuck, I'm ecstatic. Let's say I go out there with C16, stock fuel pump, and, a, and, and I can 60 foot like a 1.8 or a 1.7, slipping the clutch on 20s, and I can shift my weight to go 10.0 at 135. Fuck. <laughs> Drive it home. Happy guy. But I'm going to go out there and get it on a two-step because that's what needs to happen on a centrifugal. What, ha what needs to happen with a centrifugal in order for it to launch decent at a quarter-mile strip? You need to launch it really high, off a two-step, not the factory two-step, like a MSD or a Watt box, with slicks, hope it holds up. Or you got to buy a clutch that's a slipper-style long-arm clutch. And I'm not going to do either of those fucking things. Waiting to pick up my HO Fiber Trends from my Fox at the terminal, waiting for them to call. Nice. Eliza's S550 says, Gen 3 A10 FFE ESS, ESS G3X on a 100mm pulley currently. What pulley will get me to 750? Well, there. A 100 millimeter pulley. Hell, a 120 millimeter pulley I've had, guys. Guys, I made 738 rural horsepower on a 120 millimeter pulley with good gas. Then it made 795 when I dropped the pulley size to think 115 or 110. I think it's 110. I got I to gotta figure out what I got in there. I need to get, I'm not trying to be fast unless I need to gap a cut. Dude, you're already there. You're probably a G3X and ESS, a 120 millimeter pulley will be like at 7. 30 or 740 on the 85. No problem. Jason says, seeing you're going to tune the zero one. If not, where are you going to take it? I already tuned the zero one. I tuned the zero one. They gave me a file and I referenced it and I didn't love it. And I started with the stock file and the stock file didn't need much work. Limiters, some spark, some startup stuff and the math, 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 math. Because once it went up three PSI, it started hitting cells in the math that it wasn't tuned for. And I added the fuel there, just like I did on Mustangs. I didn't touch speed density. Some people, oh, I just turn off the math and do it speed density. Why? If, if the added boost hit another cell in the math curve, and I was able to add 5 to 7% and blend it in and make sure the math curve looked linear and straight, just like I do on Mustangs, and it fueled exactly where I wanted to, commanded, based on the EQ ratio and the tweaked math curve. And load, boost, everything was commensurate and was good. Why do I need to touch speed density? See, a lot of LS guys turn off the math. And that's okay if you want to do that. But I think the math is there for a reason. And if you understand how the math works and how it operates, why not use that? I'd rather hit the math. Don't forget the nitrous Achilles of uh, ancillaries of Nas. Don't forget the not, don't forget the nitrous ancillaries of Nas. Florida man gives Arkansas man more better coffee. Can we make that happen? Hey, Monty Rogers, you want coffee or do you want cookies? Monty Rogers, do you want coffee or do you want cookies? What's up, man? <sighs> so Mo Monty Rogers, coffee or cookies? You let me know. Kyle Hoods and Fox Notches go hand in hand. Glad Peck shut up. Peck is just being a little extra, and I think he has, like, ADHD or some shit like that. Missed a few episodes, lady, but always, as always, every episode, I'm on channel support. Thank you, Hard Hat Eugene. I don't think we're allowed to make Fast and Furious references. 
doesn't get any streeter than jumping a fake hypercar building to building. Are you running it math only? No, it's it, it, it's using the speed density from the factory and I'm tweaking the math. I am not running it math only. Just like with Mustangs, Mustangs have a calculated speed density model, okay? So if you hit another math cell because you've added three PSI, just like on a Mustang, why don't I hit the speed density on a Mustang? Why would I touch the speed density on a ZR1 if measured air fuel is exactly where I'm commanding it after tweaking the math? Go. It's, I put a wide band in it. It measured exactly what I was wanting it to do. Check the plugs. Everything looked good. So I'm like, okay, so why would I need to change the speed density stuff? Now, maybe in LS I can go, this is why. And then I'll say, okay, but have you ever tried tweaking the math? And if they say no then we have a difference of opinion. I knew you did, just heard just heard you say you'd be getting it tuned after the headers. Just curious, I'm tuning it after the headers. <laughs> what would you say the order of operation when starting a build? What would you say is the order of operation when starting a build? Um, okay, I think I know where you're getting at. First of all, have a goal in mind. Have a goal in mind. The Fairmont is not going to, okay, the Fairmont is a good, good, good starting point. I can't just put a 10 point cage in the Fairmont. The Fairmont has to get dumb shit. I'm saying dumb shit because if I'm going to go racing, that means I want to go fucking fast. So I got to get the 25, whatever the fuck spec floors cut out, major gutting, mini tub, front tubular, you know, what? how fast do I want to run? Sub 750. The Fairmont to me should be a sub 750 car. Maybe not a six second car because I don't have that kind of money, but I think I can build a sub 750 car. So I got to figure out the suspension, the weight, the cage. In my opinion, the safety has to be first. Then you start picking out power plants. Now you can get there with many power plants. Coyote, big block Chevy, big block Ford. Then you got to pick your power adder. Turbo, well, I think you got to pick it all at the same time. And in my opinion, I'm only I'm only going to go blower. I don't want to touch turbos. So it's either going to be a big positive displacement root style or twin screw blower or a crank mount and centrifugal, like a big Vortec V30 or something like that. So it's either going to be a small block Ford, big inch small block Ford, or a Coyote, which is what I know. So might as well keep it that way and get the car weighing as low as possible, 2,800 or so pounds tops, because I'm not looking to be in a class, just looking to be like streetcar stuff. And if that car can run 750s like it's its job. So in my opinion, you should pick out how fast you want to run. What chassis modifications need to happen to make that happen safely, then pick your motor up. Transmission and all that stuff, it's all part of the powertrain, pretty much. They want to chug a chug a cam chop. Uh, Martin, a coffee, sir. Okay, Monty Rogers, you get the coffee, Monty Rogers. Melissa or EPA Lake James, can you please get Monty Rogers some Dole My God Cookies coffee? So, Monty Rogers, hit up Dole My God Cookies underscore LLC on Instagram. Hit them up, say, hey, I'm the guy, I'm Monty Rogers. Prove your, prove your identity, and uh, they'll be able to get you some coffee soon. If you're on the spectrum, you're either high-functioning turvy or low-functioning turvy. James Willem says, as a GM tuner, the SD is only the real effective low below 4,000 RPMs. The only time I completely disable the math is on the older Gen 3 ECMs that can't handle high flow situation. There you go. And you've seen, James Williams, the resolution on ZR1 maths. You see how many points they have? Now, if I run out of resolution, what do we do, James? James, what do we do if you run out of resolution on a math? Get a bigger housing. That's right. If I peg the math because of the airflow, I get a bigger housing. Cobra guys had this issue for a very long time, and they started scaling and BA6000 this and this and this and that. Where Coyote guys go, oh, I peg the math? Well, yeah, either get an HPX sensor in there or get a bigger MAF housing. 
If you're pegging a 149 millimeter MAF housing, you are flowing a fucking shitload of air. The green RCSB says you will need to tune a virtual VE table along with a MAF table. I disagree at this power level. Your toilet will be split gagged when you get that coffee. Alex, is portable intake manifold make a difference in boosting ESSG3? Just curious. If it does, it's not super noticeable. Maybe boost will go down, but power will go up with the same pulley. Let's say you have a 120 millimeter pulley and you're measuring 11, 12 PSI unported. Then you port it. Now it makes 10 PSI, but it makes more power. It just means the restriction was taken away, but power goes up. <clears throat> Peak taking like off a of perk. Okay. Coffee, sir. Thank you. You got it. You got it. So get to get you some coffee. Hey, Alex, you're going to burble tune the, the zero one. That's the other thing. People think I actually made the car burble on purpose. That is 100% stock. I, that car burbled bone stock between the shifts. Money, plan, take it to someone who knows what they're doing. I mean, you're right. How much talent should someone have if they're considering buying a zero one? How much talent? Talent. You you need to, okay, this car is not like a Mustang. You can absolutely lose control in such a way where you end up in the fucking weeds with this car. This car doesn't recover from power slides as easy as a Mustang does, an S550 or even an a, a, a S197. You kick the ass end out, it's going to stay out unless you have a lot of room to do a nice big power slide. I experienced that pretty quickly in a roundabout where the roundabout had a dip. So the car loaded the suspension, I turned it, and as it was loading the suspension again over the hump, I turned it again, and it whipped around really quickly, and I caught it the ne at 40 miles an hour. The next day, I went down there with my Mustang, my S550 Mustang, and I was able to take that turn at 60 miles an hour because it was a sloppier, softer transmission, but it was more predictable. So you really have to respect these cars. I think these cars are great in road courses that aren't that bumpy and don't have a lot of undulating, loading, and unloading situations. A Mustang, I think, is easier to recover in that particular situation. Bigger housing, yes, exactly. They run into drivability issues with poor MAF signals, yes. Pegging, hey yo. What's all this talk about pegging the MAF? Don't you know I turn into the Dave channel? Your housing is getting pegged. What power level does a stock Coyote MAF peg at a three-inch pipe? Um, well... So you can go up to 14 hertz or so on a, on a, on a Gen 2 and up Coyote. Um, I think a 3-inch housing, you're going to probably peg it at about, or max it out, close to 20 PSI, a 3-inch MAF. Um, that's a lot of velocity and a lot of air flowing through a small MAF. Now, you can either make the housing bigger or change the sensor and scale it like you do Cobra ship. But... Whatever is easier for you. A lot of people that want to make, let's say, a thousand horsepower, I say, well, all you need is about 15 to 17 PSI on a twin turbo car to make that. So, depending on how good the kit is. Um, so, you probably don't need to do it, but your hertz will be at 12, 13 hertz. So, you don't have a lot of headroom there. So, if you can manufacture yourself in the math section a slightly bigger pipe, that'll allow for more resolution and more headroom if you ever want to turn it up a little bit or you have a denser air day, basically. <clears throat> I'm sorry, too much burble is annoying. Yeah, I don't touch, I don't even know where to fuck with the burble on the Corvette. It's usually spark related. I've yet to hit the limit on a four inch MAF housing on a Gen 4 LS ECMs, 800 horsepower and still have room in the MAF table. There you go. Have you decided we will drive the other car in the ZR1 race? Nobody, nobody I trust, honestly. Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. And... You guys will get there. You guys will get there. I guarantee it. I don't have any like people I would consider friends. You know what I mean? Like when you, when you go to high school and you have your friends there, those usually go away by the time you're by the time you're in your twenties. You know, you find a girlfriend, you hang out with her, and you kind of do your own thing. I don't trust anybody enough with my shit, and I don't have anyone I would consider a friend to hand the keys over. And do an adequate job of driving. I know a lot of guys that drive stick. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. But nobody nobody like me. I, I love you guys. I, if you know me or if I know you. And I've seen you drive. and I, Great. I have not seen anybody up to the task. 
to run my shit like I run my shit. I run my shit like I hate my shit. Now, the other thing is this, the trust factor. If I was to put them in a vehicle that makes that much power and they lose control, you know, I'm going to have to eat that. So I'm just like, you know what? I don't think I can find anyone. Now, if I find someone that can drive their own vehicle well and they make 800 or 900, then I'll, you know, say, hey, let's race car like Jeremiah Camp. Jeremiah Camp and I or Nick Tarpia could probably be a, a nice little run. I'm sure their, their cars make a lot of power. But, I, you know, I want to race my cars against each other. And, and I, I don't really trust anybody to get in there. I don't think Jake is that good of a stick driver. No offense to him. Um, I don't think many guys I know are good stick drivers. Now, Yandro, uh, the guy, uh, second shift racing, any of the stick shift motherfuckers. Yeah, but they're not friends like that where I trust them with my shit. Why is remote tuning so much harder to find for LS? No one has a good website. They're all in-person tuning only. Am I just looking hard enough? Seems like there is a LUN for GMs. There is. The problem is this. I think the GM stuff specifically has not been vetted like Lund Racing invented this stuff. Okay? That means JLT Series 1, here's a value. ID 1000s, here's a value. Uh, you know, you're dialing your torque tables, you're dialing how you want the car to drive. But Ford made it easy. Ford made the stuff repeatable. Ford itself has very repeatable data. Now, I don't know shit about LSs, but I guarantee if you all have the same year Camaro with an LS in it, let's say you all have 2008 ZR1s, 2009, sorry, 2009 ZR1s, and I have 30 of them, I could literally copy paste my differences just tune only to all of those Corvettes, dial them in, data log them. I think it's absolutely doable. But I think the LS guys just don't do it that way. And I don't know why. I don't know why they are not willing to. Now, some of those guys will say in-person tuning is better. Maybe, who knows? Maybe the, 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 the LSs or the GM tuning model and torque stuff is totally different and has to be dialed in vehicle for vehicle. But I can't imagine why, because when I worked at a shop and we had a guy, an LS tuner that was remote, he did a killer job with all of our cars. It was 6L80tuning.com or something like that. You don't trust anybody at Lund to drive? I'm going to be honest with you. No. Jason, I'm going to be honest with you. No. I love Dakota. He's great. I love Brandon. I love Junior. I don't trust anybody to drive my shit. Alex, should I be saving for a Ben Calamache 3 with drive, drive shaft ESS? Uh, yes. <laughs> You're going to bust the fork. There's a guy here. There's a guy in the complex. a kid in the complex. He busted his ship fork. He's like, who should I take this trans to get built? I'm like, Ben Calamer. Ship it to him. Rent the car for two weeks. Whatever you got to do. Ship him the trans. Especially if you let them borrow your tools. I'll drive out of your life if any one of your cars. Yeah, you're right. Joel Steele. Yeah, look. You saw... When Cletus drove his Corvette, his uh, go-kart Corvette, right? You guys probably thought, oh my God, this guy shifts phenomenally. Go look at the video where he drove his white C7 versus the truck. Them shifts were whack shit. So I thought, oh, it's the face-plated trans and the fucking string gauge that's making you look like a fucking hero. Give Joel or Wesley a call. Uh, you don't need to trust someone their wallet to be big enough to replace the car. Um, drop me my like and we'll catch after work. Keep up the badass content. Thank you. Do your soundboard check. Got to go clear out the stream. No, we're good. Anyone with a laptop can tune an LS. They're bulletproof, right? Key slap, key slap, and close the laptop. Yee yee. <laughs> it's not Alex. It's it's not Alex. You were on point. It's just old habits die hard in the LS tuning world. That's what I'm going to say. I think that you can get a laptop and dial in your combo really good save that file as your na tune then you add your rotofab value file then you add your id 1000 value file then you switch the stoic or see i don't know how ls guys change the stoic on their car but based on everything i know it's pretty simple based on everything i saw on hp tuners i'm like it looks like it's just a stoic change. <laughs> like, like just like Mustangs, but I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. Have Keith Ray drive your other car, race for the bill on the GT500 motor instead of all, all that. 
<laughs> Do you prefer Sage Street ratios over the stock ratios? No. I prefer the stock ratios over the Gen 3 ratios. But the Gen 3 has a G-Force gear set. James says, remote tuning can be done on LSs as long as the customer does exactly what you say when logging. Ask, know what? They do what? And folks lie about their setups. James Williams, exactly the same thing on, on the Coyote end of things. If my customer doesn't follow my instructions, his car will tune like trash. And it is not the tuner's fault. It's your stupid ass not listening to what I'm saying. When I send out a base file, I send out a paragraph of instructions about this big. When I get back more than one log, I know you didn't listen. I know you didn't read it. You did whatever the fuck you thought you could do. And I go, why did you send more than one file? It is very specific in the instructions what you need to do. Why in the world did you send more than one file? Well, I thought more data. More better. Probably going to go with Justin White. Uh, he's killer. He's good. He's very good. The guy, that guy got beat by Angry Dorito Starlet. <laughs> saying a Coyote needs OPGs to bulletproof it is like saying an LS needs a cam to make power. Well, actually, I think, I think you're wrong on that one, right? Doesn't an LS... Need a cam to make power? Like, without a cam, you're pretty much done at 6,000 RPMs, right? Or 5,500. Mustang guys don't read. I sent 20 logs to make sure one of them was good enough. For LS, isn't crucial to have a cam to make big power? That's what I thought, but who the hell knows? Why are you mean mugging me? Every time I look at the fucking camera, you're mean mugging my ass, motherfucker. Who the fuck do you think you are, bitch? Who the fuck do you think you are? He don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck that I run the show here. Didn't you let someone drive the red car and they hit something with it? Or am I wrong? Oh, yes. My red car, I let somebody borrow it who I thought was trustworthy. I thought was trustworthy. And you know what the dumb son of a bitch did? He crashed it in a single car accident. Floored it. Did a donut in the middle of a fucking intersection. Not on purpose. And then slammed it up against the curb. And that dumb motherfucker cost me three friendships. Three friendships. Because he's a fucking clown. The fact that he did that with my car. My car. Like, I respect people's property so much. And this guy was like, well, let me go do a fucking burnout anyway. And people had to defend this fucking clown. Even after he fixed the car, the car was never the same. The car was never the same. It always made noise. It always made a creaky. And I just said, ah, fuck it. Let me just get him out of my life because he already ruined my fucking car. And then these motherfuckers had to defend him, I guess. But yo, right out with that fucking horse. Oh, oh, you, you, you defending that motherfucker? See you later. More data, more better. Tony flinching got me. More coffee, more better. No more coffee, no more coffee, but Tony Dominguez, do you want cookies? Tony Dominguez, you get the cookies. Why not get some cookies, Tony Dominguez? Tony Dominguez, hit up domagotcookies underscore LLC, domagotcookies.com. Get yourself some cookies. Tony Dominguez, get yourself some cookies. Even on basic builds, guys change the cam on something other than stock generally. Mo cookies, mo happy. Tony has Elmo eyes. Um, who crashed Alex's red car? Oh, bro, stop it. You want to break? That still pisses me off to this day because of the fucking thought process. The thought process of that motherfucker. I'm like, you are a stupid, stupid. Holy shit. 32 38% fuel lobe is almost common. I did a burnout, but smelled like clutch. That's why I refuse to beat on anybody else's car when I drive them. <laughs> I'll take some cookies, bro. Tony Dominguez, domagotcookies.com, domagotcookies underscore LLC on Instagram. You get some cookies. I thought the noise was the trunk ghost. You got it, brother. Alex, you owe me a 10-second car. Bro, don't get me started on that shit because, see, I don't know. Okay, let's talk a little bit. I got five minutes. Let's talk about anything else but cars. How many of you guys hold grudges for life? How many of you guys hold grudges for life? 
like forever. You you cross me, and you're done forever. And you know there comes there's a peace that comes along with that because I never have to deal with you again. I never have. I could be in the same room with you and look right through your fucking ass and not acknowledge your existence. I'm really good at that. Ask my girlfriend. My girlfriend's like, "Well, you didn't you don't you hate that motherfucker?" I'm like, "What motherfucker?" She goes, "You looked right at him," and I'm like, "I did." I have a great way of shunning you. Now, this is what happens usually. Every single time I meet somebody and I either have them on the channel or I reference them on the channel or they know me, they think that they become part of the channel. I'm like, no, no, you don't get it. I'm the star. (laughs) I do all the work. I do everything. I'm the focal point. But people say, well, yeah, watch what happens when I leave the channel. His shit's going to go down to shitter. Then they see me get a ZR1. Then they see me get the GT500. Then they see me this and they're like, oh, he's doing just fine without your fucking ass. Maybe your thought process was absolute horseshit. Many people that have come in my life in Florida literally think that they made my shit. They, They seriously think that they have any anything to do with this channel and i'm like bro you you i could dump everybody in my life and this channel will thrive and do the same thing because i'm the focal point i'm the guy that runs the show i do everything on this fucking channel i steer the ship you don't you're not even a fucking you're nothing so when people like that all of a sudden get sideways and say oh yeah like i got a guy who i he didn't do anything to me specifically but i just didn't like how he talked to me I think he thinks I'm like beneath him. And I'm like, no, 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 fuck you. You know, so I, I just basically said, yo, man, you're done. Go fuck yourself. I don't want nothing to do with you. And you could tell that he got mad that I am known in the Mustang community. I'm known and nobody knows who the fuck he is. And he's mad about that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. That, that's your problem. If you want to be a known guy in the Mustang community, do something. Like do something to get become noteworthy. But he's like, oh, I've been around big men. Who you been with? I've been with made people. Big people. Who you been with? And I'm like, but nobody knows who the fuck you are. So I had to disown that motherfucker too. And that guy probably thought that he made my channel somehow. Bro, I hold grudges for fucking life. If I dislike you and we had a disagreement and I come to the point of saying you're cut off, you're cut off forever. You'll never come back in my good graces. Nothing you could say or do. Sucking my dick and apologizing isn't going to get you back in my good graces. Um, once they do me wrong, things won't be the same no matter if you try to make it up. It just won't work. Alex's grudges last as long as stock OPGs that don't touch the limiter forever. But I'm part of you, Alex. We're on the same wavelength. You'll miss me. Guys, how many of you guys think that Tony Full Bolton literally thinks that he somehow is responsible for my success? Like, how many of you guys think that Tony Full Bolton, the stand of all stands, literally sits in his house and thinks that he is somehow responsible for my success. How many people think that the parts guy that I had beef with thinks that he ran my shit? He was on here typing it up like he owned the shit. Once he's gone, show's been fine. No issue. Actually went up in viewership. People think that because they provide me parts, because they're they're, they're chummy and they're on the chat, They think that they somehow deserve a part of the show. Are you fucking crazy? Are you psycho? Stop it. Stop thinking that you run the show. Please. I've had so many people come into my life, want to be on the channel, and then go, oh, yeah? Like, like what happened when I started working on my own cars? Remember that? Remember that shit? Remember when you guys thought, oh, man, now people were like, oh, man, he got nobody work on his cars now. He's fucked. Oh, shit, I'm working on my own cars. Oh, shit, Alex took the motor out. Oh, shit, Alex changed the transmission. Oh, shit, Alex is doing it. Did you think you were the focal point of the fucking shit? No. So grudges with me last forever. And I love it. I It actually helps me, helps me um, grow. Look, I wouldn't have gotten you any of that content. Taking the motor out, diagnosing it, all that stuff. If I didn't, if I wasn't forced to work on my own shit. Um, when someone has to name drop the people they're with, that literally shows people they don't 
the person seriously okay. Definitely not all the hard work, money, knowledge, and wrenching or anything that made you successful. Guys, they think I stepped... There are people in Florida that think I just stumbled across this knowledge and somehow faked my way into this shit. Okay. <laughs> dude, dude, there are people still making videos about shit that I left behind months ago. I'm like, dude, whatever you think is going on in your head, good on you. I've had workers that wanted 50% of profits because they worked with me. Ignacio Ramirez, I had a guy hit me up on Facebook. And he said this, listen to these words. I have ideas for videos. I'm like, okay. But before I tell you the ideas, I want 50% of what that video makes. Listen to this, guys. I wish I could find that video. I wish I could find that message. I have video ideas for you, Alex. But before I tell you them, I want 50% of the profit that that video makes. Could you imagine having the balls and nerve to think that you can call out a content creator and say, you should make a video on headers. I make the video on headers. I write it. I produce it. I edit it. I put it up. I promote it. And you get 50% of the profit, you fucking clown. I've had many people hit me up about that stuff. That's why I don't collaborate with nobody. That's why I don't go on anybody's shit because then they feel responsible for my success. Fuck that shit. Lund ever filed a lawsuit for theft of IP of Gravy's car? No. No, there's no lawsuit there. There's nothing there. There's no there there. There's no. There's nothing there. Look, it hasn't run better than when we had it. It got beat in every race. In every race that car was in, it got beat by a Lund car. So, poof is in the pudding. I love when he was uh, crying on his channel, clearing the air, clearing the air. Please stop it. Wow, people, the peasantry, that's crazy. Hopefully you play the Canelo clip for that guy. Not Alex, I've been here multitasking, said Agent Orange. Was it the guy that was on the chat months ago saying he wants to bounce ideas off of you on Facebook? Yes. A video ideas, exactly. I just remember some guy with the hat that did nothing but bash LS guy, LOL, and hated you. I came across this new side of you, and I enjoy the content. My lunch break. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He, 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 oh, he's talking about YOLO douchebag, the character. That character was going nowhere fast. It was going the way of Cletus. And you could see that Cletus is having issues identifying who is who. One day he's Cletus. One day he's Garrett. And then one day, in front of the most important session he's ever going to have, he mixed the two of them. And I went, bro, lost cause there. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I'll be back on probably Thursday or Friday for a YDBT Daily at 8 o'clock p.m. Talk some shit. I'm going to try to get you some video for tomorrow. Um, probably try to get some launching stuff on the, um, on the white car just to see what I'm working with. I put a, a, a drag setup on the notch, put a new carburetor in it. So I'm going to take it somewhere and just do some launches with it just to see how it acts on the street, see if there's anything to be gained. Take the draggy out, see what it does at 60 foot. I'm not going to run it out the back because the last thing I want to do is get in trouble. If I get caught doing a burnout and maybe going 60 miles an hour, that's fine. Then going 130 and taking getting your car taken from you for a second time. I'm not down with that shit. So be on um, tomorrow, get a video up about 8 o'clock or so, and then I'll be on Thursday or Friday for YDBT Daily and we could talk some shit then. All right, guys, I'm out of here. See you guys either Thursday, Friday or tomorrow, 8 p.m. for a new video. See you guys later. Have a good rest of your night. Congrats to Moni and Ignacio, I think. I think they won the cookies and the coffee. Have a good rest of your night. See you later. Bye.